for injuries. Uh, that kind of sucks uh, for him, for the Packers, and uh, for anybody who had Aaron Rodgers and or his receivers on their fantasy teams because that could be a rough one. Oh, yeah. Coincidentally, they- in two of my four games, I was playing Aaron Rodgers last week. So, okay, well, uh, I got two, two W's over there, yeah. Fox for Aaron Rodgers. Being a Dallas Cowboys fan for as long as I have been a Tony Romo fan, I'm all too familiar with that injury. And I think uh, Rodgers is one broken collarbone away from tying Tony's record, so kudos to him. There it is. Uh, will we see Tony Romo on Green Bay this year? No. Damn it. Although I wouldn't mind. What is that? Because I don't have to hear him on CBS anymore every week. Are you upset that listening to him is ruining all the other sportscasters because of how good he is? No. Tony Romo is the best thing about Thursday Night Football to me. I, I love him. I love hearing him call plays before they happen, man. I really do. Well, he's, he's he's tremendous. What do you mean he's not good? He's awful. He yeah. Your attitude towards Tony Romo is awful. I want you to get past the color of his jersey. This Kevin's seems like a superficial issue. Here. He hasn't stopped talking. It's he's irritating. But he's excited about the game. Good. That's, that's what I like. Tone to it do. down. Well, Tone it down, Tony. Tone it up, man. He's the Mar Ronello of, of pro football. True story. I was watching uh, football with my dad last Sunday. Um, I think it was. I don't know what the, there were two four o'clock games on. One was Rams Jaguars, and the other one was Chiefs Steelers on CBS. And I asked him which game he wanted to watch, and he said he didn't care. And I said, "Well, CBS has Tony Romo doing the game," and he's like, "Let's well, stick with Rams Chargers." True story. Rams Jaguars, excuse me. Listen, shoot. Tony Romo has been getting rave reviews from everybody in the business. People are on crack. What? People are on crack. You know what? I feel like this is the Kenny Omega thing all over again. You're just anti-establishment. I had not listened to him call a game, and I heard a lot of good reviews about him, including one of my friends reached out to me and said that he thought he did a nice job. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then I watched a game he did. I think it was Packers Bengals, and he would not stop talking. And Jim Nance, I forgot, was even doing the play-by-play because he wouldn't, Romo would not stop talking. See, I think it's a, it's a different era, too, because, like, you have all these guys that have been pl- calling plays for God knows how long, and it's the same thing over and over and over again. I don't hear Tony every week. He's not a local affiliate, you know, out here, so I'm not tired of it. But I, I he honestly, he kind of seems like a kid in a candy store. Uh, the, the guy has so much enthusiasm for the game, and I love listening to him break down why something went the way it went during that play and, like, the looks he saw beforehand. So I particularly love Tony, but to each his own. Um, that being said, what else last? Oh, well, actually, this week, we're, uh, it's Friday afternoon we're doing the show. So the Thursday night game was last night. It was the Chiefs versus the Raiders. And the Chiefs doing the job back-to-back weeks, huh? Yeah. Derek Carr pulling it out. And um, Amari Cooper finally showed up. He remember how to catch a ball, caught a nice. touchdown or two. Nice. You know, it was, it was a good win for them. But it was a hell of a game. Michael Crabtree caught a, what, a 12-yard touchdown pass with one second left on the clock. I think his time ran out, so... Ra- uh, the Raiders needed that, were they two and three? Two and four. I think they're two and. Mm. They could be three and three now. Did they have a bye week already? Yeah, I think they had a bye week already. Right. Probably two and four. Uh, yeah, so I they don't were, know. Yeah, almost. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> they they were last in the AFC West, so they they needed that win over, and the Chiefs were uh, first in the AFC West, so big win for them. This week, looking forward, a lot of close games. I don't see many spreads here that are off the uh, that are off the chain. All right, so you want, what do you think? You want to go first? Sure, I don't mind. Uh, I'm going to take the Rams at home, three and a half against the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals played pretty decently last week. They had a big lead early against Tampa Bay, um, but Tampa Bay kind of creeped back into that game late. I think the Rams' defense is pretty solid, and they've been playing, I think, you know, better than people have thought most of the year. Um, Goff has improved as a quarterback from year one to year two. Um, they got a nice win on the road in Jacksonville last weekend. So, and I don't really think much of the Cardinals at all, especially on the road. So, I'm going to take the Rams laying three and a half against Arizona. Even though Adrian Peterson's probably going to rush for 275 yards this week. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, I'm going to go with the Saints over the quarterback with Green Bay Packers. Saints uh, minus four. They're in Green Bay. I don't really think it matters. Um, without Aaron Rodgers, I don't foresee the Packers having much of a running game. And if you're not going to run on the Saints. To get some yards on first and second down, I don't see them being able to beat them. So I'm taking the Saints minus four. Okay. I'm going to take Minnesota minus five and a half Minnesota. against Baltimore. And I know Keith Keenum is their quarterback, but their defense is pretty solid. And Baltimore's had also to issue scoring uh, the football this year. Um, they had some issues, I think, early on. It's, you know, they were in, they got destroyed when they went to London by Jacksonville. I think anytime they play a decent defense, they're just going to have trouble moving the ball. And I think that's the Vikings defense is pretty solid. 
Um, I just don't see them scoring a whole lot of points this week, and I think the Vikings are going to do, do enough to get the win, so I'll take them giving five and a half. Um, take an unlikely candidate here. I think the Jets um, are going to take out the Dolphins. Jets plus three. I think the Jets probably beat the Dolphins straight up. I know they're in Miami, but it's not, you know, you're playing Miami, you know, not like you're playing in Green Bay. There's not a lot of home field advantage there, and I have zero faith in Jay Cutler whatsoever. Understandable, my friend. That is understandable. Um, I don't know where to go on my third pick. I'm going to be honest with you. It's This is a tough one. Um, part of me likes to stay out of these divisional matchups. I don't want to touch the I was Atlanta. Looking at the, yeah, I was looking at the same thing. I don't want to touch that Atlanta game because I don't know what the hell to expect in the Super Bowl rematch. Uh, you know what? I'll just go nuts. Let's go nuts. I went nuts last week, and it was the only game I got a win in, which was the Jets getting nine and a half against New England at home. So I'll take uh, Cleveland getting six at home against Tennessee. Come on. I'm starting Mariota in two leagues. You got to go Cleveland over Mariota? I know they won last Monday night, but I didn't think they looked all that impressive. And uh, I agree with you. They're going to – I don't know. Cleveland's going to get a win at some point. I'm not saying it's going to be here, but I feel like at home, Tennessee's offense isn't all that great. Um, their defense, I don't know if it's good or not. They gave up like 50-something points to Houston that one week. I'm going to say Cleveland getting six at home. I'll take Cleveland. Okay, that's fair. And despite their impressive performance last week, i got to take the, uh, the Seahawks over the Giants. Seahawks giving up four and a half. They have a unbelievable defense, and I they're going to get to Eli, and I don't think the Giants are going to see the success rushing uh, against the Seahawks as they had last week. Um, against Denver. I know Denver had a good defense. I just think that was, I, I don't know. I I think Seattle can be able to get more pressure, and they're going to sack the box, and there's no receiver for Eli to throw to, and Russell Wilson's probably poised for a pretty big game. He's due. So I'm taking Seattle minus five of the Giants. All right. That's it. You I know seven picks. We're, week, we're through week seven, and we've never taken off the team. Yeah, I don't think we've done that. No, yeah, we haven't. I was thinking about it, taking Baltimore over Minnesota. Once you picked them, I was like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to break up the band here. The only one listening podcast. I don't want you super kicking me through a window. No, we don't want that. No. So uh, that's it for the uh, NFL music this week. Could 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 you? Oh, damn it! It's the it's the gimmick. You can't have it every week. <laughs> well, we could have it at the whole show anyway. I think that would make our like better a little bit. The NFL music can't get much worse. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Need I remind everybody to check out our Twitter and our Instagram. I will be live tweeting the show on Sunday night. It's a commitment. That is that is a commitment. At TLC. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the all at all night long WP. Uh, we went to I guess real quick before we wrap up. We went to the Evolve show last weekend. I know we talked about that previously. Um, now, correct. I said last weekend. I don't think there's going to be another Evolve show. You corrected me and said they're going to be WrestleMania weekend shows. Yep. There's nothing booked from now until WrestleMania weekend. No? Nope, not that I saw. Hmm. Why did I think I saw they were coming back out here in December? But I don't know about that. I, I don't um, know. I might have dreamed that. So it's, it's Give fun. me your thoughts on the show while I look that up and make sure I'm not a doofus. Well, I think the show was solid. You know, if anyone who has been has been to an all fall show or if you haven't, um, it was Saturday show in Woodside, Queens. It was 6 o'clock start. It started on time. And it was supposed to end, it was supposed to go from 6 to 8.30, and it actually ended early, and then before 8 o'clock, there were, I think, six or seven matches total on the whole thing. So it's a it's a pretty nice show as far as, you know, if you don't want to go, if you're comparing it to WWE and you don't want to sit in the, in an arena for like five hours and all that stuff, so it's not bad, you know. Um, it's a, it was a nice venue, um, not hard, not far from the train station in Woodside. I thought the show was solid. Most of the matches were, were you know, decent to good. The main event was Matt Riddle against Keith Lee for the WWN championship. So, and uh, Keith Lee ended up winning the championship in a last man standing match, which I thought was very solid. The crowd was into it the whole way. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. lost to Jaka, I believe, in a non-title match. That's for the Evolve championship. What is, what is this? This is MC Hammer? Boys to Men? Better. What I, what's happening? I thought you were talking about Keith oh, Lee. Keith Lee. Yeah. Friend of the podcast, Keith Lee. Friend of the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. Yeah. But I want to I wanna put over, like you said, the show. I mean, we talk about professional. It was started on time. It ended on time. There was no uh, skullduggery between the matches. It was it was straightforward. Um, a couple of – they had the – 
F uh, Full Impact Pro guys called The End were there. And The End uh, ran it. Well, they didn't run in. It was after the first three matches, and they just decimated people. They beat the shit out of Darby Allen. They powerbombed the guy from the – God, this song is awesome. I got to say. They powerbombed Darby Allen from, like, the outside, like, to the balcony. And what I thought was cool is they teased a little bit of um, The End against Catchpoint. Uh, Jocko, Tracy Williams, and um, who am I? The guy Cash Point, Toronto Blank, Tracy Williams, Jocko, and Fred Kiyeti, you know. So uh, that is a, a built in feud. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Chris Dickinson, right? Isn't Yeah out of Catch Point? Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I just like to say, Yeah, yeah and uh, Chris Dickinson, Dirty Daddy, if you will. So they have. Um, that, like, I was going crazy, like, hoping the end was going to come out in the end of that match. Like, I, I was. I was actually like like pumped, and I think that that was a really cool way for them to introduce those guys. They have a badass theme song, and they all three guys have a different look, and, except for the one who kind of reminds me of um, Brian Kendrick. He's got that Brian Kendrick look, but uh, I don't know much of them for, from FIP, so I'm gonna go back and watch and see what I could find. But it was cool, and I hope if I was running more shows, I know they got the um, the WrestleMania weekend shows coming up. Hope there's uh, hope they make it back to New York sometime soon. Yeah, it was solid. And what's her name? Kelly Priscilla Kelly. Awesome Theories Girl? Priscilla Kelly, is that her Priscilla name? Kelly, yeah. She's doing a great job. She should keep it up. Maybe come on the On How Long Wrestling Podcast. Send her a tweet, man. I'm going to. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, send her a tweet. I'll send her a tweet. See if she wants to come on the show, maybe bring Awesome Theory on here as well. But what else we got? That's it, right? Wrap it up? Wrap it up. Wrap. Wrap it up. Um, like I said, I'll be live tweeting the show on Sunday night. You can, you can, you can take that to the bank. Don't don't cash it yet. Just don't cash it. Um, all night long wrestling podcast. Facebook.com slash a all night long WP. Blog talk radio for now. Damage three sixty five radio network and uh, that's it. Enjoy enjoy TLC this weekend and I uh, hope it's a good show. As always, he is the stallion. I'm the enforcer. I'm gonna tap out this week. Get your next lovable dog or cat at Bidewee's Fall in Love Festival. Visit Bidewee on Old Country Road in West Hampton on Sunday, October 29th and meet adorable puppies, kittens, dogs, and cats while enjoying food and fun for the whole family. Adoption fees will be waived for this special event. Call 844-LOVE-PETS or visit lovepets.org for more info. Come and get your love. Come and get your love. Come and get your next lovable dog or cat at Bidewee's Fall in Love Festival. Visit Bidewee on Old Country Road in West Hampton on Sunday, October 29th and meet adorable puppies, kittens, dogs, and cats while enjoying food and fun for the whole family. Adoption fees will be waived for this special event. Call 844-LOVE-PETS or visit lovepets.org for more info. Come and get your love.